So, <clears throat> if you uh, if you see that, like I was saying, this this was a world war, right? And uh, and uh, they chose sides. Some you know chose sides by their own will. Some some people were tricked. Like I think Shailia was tricked, right? So he was the uncle of uh, Arjuna, or the Pandavas rather, and uh, he was he was coming with his entire party to join uh, Arjuna and uh, other Pandavas. But then uh, on the way, and they were traveling from a very long distance. Like I said, it was it was a world war. They were traveling from a very long distance, so, so they were stopping in between camping. Uh, to you know, let the army rest and you know, uh, then move on. So, uh, he knew that this army was really big and he wanted that army. So, what he did was, while they were coming, he set up a camp. He did not come in front, but he set up a very wonderful camp where you know there, there was such elaborate arrangement where all the soldiers were given you know royal treatment. They had enough food to eat. Uh, and you know, drink and uh, you know they were well entertained, etc. So uh, the hospitality was so good, right? And shall I assume that this is this must be you know Yudhishthir's arrangement only? And he said, you know, uh, such a wonderful arrangement. I will definitely fight from the side of the person who's arranged this, thinking that it's Yudhishthir. But then uh, immediately Duryodhan came forward. Saying that, you know, I'm the one who's arranged it. Now you have to fight from my side. So uh, he obviously then, you know, had to fight because he promised. So, uh, and, and I, we also see that how uh, he became the chariot driver for Karna, right? Because he was a very expert in chariot uh, driving. And Karna said, on the other side, there's Arjuna with Krishna as his chariot driver. I want, I want someone very, very expert as my chariot driver. But then uh, Karuna, uh, sorry, the, but then uh, Shailya was kind of discouraging him during the battle. <laughs> he was like, you don't know how to do things, this and that. He was actually you know, kind of abusing him and discouraging him. And uh, there was a point where Karna actually was shooting Nag, uh, Nagpash on uh, Arjuna. And, uh, you know, the, uh, he, he was aiming for Arjuna's head. Shailya said, aim for his throat. He said, no, no, I'll aim for the head. And then he shot the arrow. And seeing that coming through, uh, Krishna, what he did, and Krishna saved Arjuna so many times during the battle. So he pressed the uh, chariot with his, with his feet. And it went inside the ground, you know, a few feet. So the, the arrow missed his head and, you know, took off his helmet. So... Shaila started abusing again, like, I told you, aim for his uh, neck, right? Had you aimed for his neck, his head would have been gone right now, <laughs> right? So, like this, he was constantly discouraging him. Anyways, that was that story. So, uh, <clears throat> all these kings, they had <clears throat> chosen, and we could clearly see that more people had chosen the side of Adharma. 11 Akshoni Sena versus 7, right? So, uh, even uh, Dhritarashtra, you know, he chose to not hear, uh, you know, what is dharma. Or he, he heard rather, but he chose not to act upon it. Bhishma Pitama, uh, he was in the assembly. Dronacharya was in the assembly where, you know, they were trying to force Draupadi to strip naked. So, but they chose to remain silent, right? And as a result, you know, Bhishma Pitama was actually shot with so many arrows, it pierced every portion of his body. And uh, when, when Yudhishthir Maharaj went to Bhishma Pitama towards the end, uh, Krishna actually, because after the entire war, Yudhishthir was feeling so guilty. There were 64 crore people who died. So Yudhishthir Maharaj was feeling so guilty that just to make me a king, so many people died. Actually, that was not true. It was Dharma Yud. Krishna wanted to establish uh, you know, Dharma. And uh, they were the mediums or instruments. And, but, but he was feeling so guilty. And even when Krishna pacified, still he could not be pacified. 
imagine right and of course if krishna wants to pacify him completely he can but he wanted uh, to give the glory to his devotee and like we said you know there's a competition between uh, the devotee and the lord you know who will serve more so the lord like the devotee wants to glorify the lord the lord also wants to glorify the devotee so to you know glorify bhishma pitama he actually took yudhishthir maharaj so that he can be pacified by bhishma pitama and then in shrimad bhagavatam we have instructions uh, of bhishma pitama to yudhishthir maharaj <clears throat> there was a question before he started instructions that uh, draupadi that you know you kept quiet how are you in a position of instructing yudhishthir maharaj so bhishma pitama gave a very nice reply saying that uh, you know uh, the the food which i was eating uh, in the royal palace which was you know of the wealth of the drashtra and duryodhan right uh, that food basically polluted, polluted my consciousness and uh, therefore you know even though i wanted to i remained silent because i was under their obligation but now since arjuna's arrows have shot you know every inch of my body so all that blood which was formed due to eating of that food is gone so now i am purified <laughs> right now i can uh, instruct you vishnu maharaj so even uh, she was convinced so uh, so everybody basically made a choice you know uh, and we also are faced with a lot of choices right so uh, <clears throat> and and a lot and and practically every single day we might have to make certain choice and uh, depending on what we choose we either taste success or failure we either uh, you know <clears throat> we either feel good we either are on the path of the righteousness or we choose the bad right so uh, it's very very important actually that's the only power the soul has the freedom to choose right there is destiny i think we discussed a little bit of this during the three, three days course there is destiny something is predestined predestined means uh, what circumstances i'll be put into is basis my past karma right so what i did in the past created my destiny which i might go through now or in near future right and what i will do now will create future destiny so <clears throat> will create future destiny right so uh, and and people they have this question they confuse this a lot of times ki you know sab kuch predestined hai or you know everything is you know my choice so both are incorrect there is destiny yes which means a set of circumstances i am put into and there is free will also and that free will is the power to choose and you may those who would have read seven habits of highly effective people like i said it's all from bhagavad gita right stephen covey has picked up everything from bhagavad gita and he's confident indians don't read bhagavad gita so my book will be a best seller <clears throat> so he says between stimulus and response lies the greatest power the freedom to choose that's what he says right and bhagavad gita is saying the same stuff so <clears throat> that's our choice right uh, what we how we respond to a given circumstance is our choice and uh, just to give you a quick example there were certain stories i was going to say but i think they'll take the entire class so i won't get into that but just a quick example uh, so imagine uh, you know uh, there is a person who's uh, you know broken the law and is put into jail and once he's inside the he's he's misused his freedom and he's he's thrown into the jail and even when coming in the jail he's like hey jailer i'll see you and he's abusing the jailer right and he's going on and on and on for half an hour jailers like this guy is too smart right so he was put in the regular cell he's taken out from there and put into you know a more uh, stricter cell where the restricted cell where the area to move first he was in a 6 by 6 cell probably and now he is in an area which is very very confined it's it's just 3 by 3 can only move so much right and it's dark 
it's not having enough light etc and this guy starts abusing you even more right like you rascal you're doing this to me this and that he he starts abusing you even more and let me come out i'll see you right so uh, the jailer thinks that this guy is even more over smart now so what he does and and uh, somebody who had gone to serve him you know he st- tries to catch his collar and beat that uh, constable so the jailer like we have to do something about this character now so uh, you know he is now chained up completely right wo film mein dikha dena aisa he was chained up uh, arms and legs completely so <clears throat> now his freedom is how much he can only do this right this much only move that much right so the more you misuse your freedom your freedom is reduced right the power to choose you have the power of choice in a given circumstance whether i should do right i should do wrong right you have a power of choice that's 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 the only thing that the soul has the power to desire or to choose right but that power gets reduced with every wrong choice it gets increased with every right choice right so uh, you know this this guy now he has only this much freedom and if he continues abusing the jailer will think okay let him remain there for you know another week agar sudhra to theek hai chhod denge thoda right normal cell pe le aayenge nahi to let him continue and if this guy now you know changes his behavior instead of abusing he abides by the rules right within few hours he is left from there in the regular cell he is very nice he is uh, you know cooperating you know and helping etc you know you have these prisoners who are basically in charge of the other prisoners in jail uh, you know who basically are like class monitors for the other <laughs> so they have more privileges they have more freedom to move around they can actually get, go out uh, more frequently talk to the uh, police guys and you know make arrangements etc so they have more freedom because they are cooperating and uh, seeing good behavior the government also reduces it's chalo theek hai you know you were supposed to be there in for three years let me reduce that and you know after one and a half years only you can move out so their punishment is also reduced so similarly if we utilize our freedom of choice right choose krishna right and uh, every single opportunity or every single uh, moment uh, not moment actually situation that right, we are put into we can think whether this will take me towards krishna or away from krishna simple right whenever we are stuck uh, you know on that you know cross road where we have two three choices four choices five choices right just simple we need to ask ourselves will this take me towards krishna or away from krishna and if you still don't get the answer you are little little bit more confused always reach out uh, to a senior devotee uh, to a spiritual master right to anyone who's guiding you so always reach out take guidance uh one of the signs of humility is to take guidance right? take correction direction and guidance right so if i'm going wrong someone has the right to correct me who is that someone i can obviously give that give that right to some, uh, you know spiritual master of course to someone who's also my shiksha guru right so to get correction direction and guidance is a sign of humility right i am ready for all these things varna are unko kya pata hai you know the the mind jumps why should i take direction from someone he doesn't even know what my work situation is you know maybe he is a brahmachari in the ashram so what will he know he is not even gone to office any time right the mind may jump like this but we should if we take them as representatives of krishna and uh, you know be humble and try to understand what they're saying and apply that right then our lives can change very very drastically and uh, you'll find yourself more and more making those right choices having more and more freedom right uh, any any allurements may come your way and you will have that power to say no 
you will have that power to say no any good thing comes across and you will have the power to say yes right away otherwise we have so much opportunity nahi nahi baad mein abhi time nahi right we we get into that so it's basically unfortunate that krishna is providing you opportunities but we don't have time so we will be able to say yes to things we want to do and we will be able to say no to things we don't want to do okay. if we if we listen to our mind you know it will be like nectar in the beginning oh it's so nice but poison in the end the end result will be misery you will think are maine ye kyu kiya but if you listen to your intelligence right uh, it may be poison in the beginning are i am missing that movie yaar but nectar in the end oh good i went for this kirtan instead of that stupid movie <clears throat> so this is the gist what i wanted to convey about <laughs> power of choice uh so so everyone had a choice and uh, we see how they chose and therefore they had those uh, the particular destination right so what you choose will decide your destination and we need to flex our choice muscles uh, you know positively so that you know we we can actually make it strong uh had a hand up yeah who had their hand up varija yes varija is there something you like to convey yes what if there is a question or a comment any reflection also answered uh, the question got answered okay <laughs> what was your question anyway okay so that if it yeah okay uh so anyways so uh, we have this we have spent millions and trillions of lifetimes doing what we've been doing right till now in this life also uh, which means you know eating sleeping mating and defending right we've been doing these four things forever and for you know unlimited lifetimes so this life let's choose uh, you know to surrender to krishna this this one life proper this to say just give this one life to krishna right <clears throat> okay so let's get to our uh, reading of bhagavad gita okay. uh share my screen quickly some very very interesting verses today harsha mata ji has a hand up oh yes harsha uh, it's also a question and i also want to share something hmm. am i audible yes yes so like i have observed in my life and i want to ask you if it's true that um, whenever i am in a state of rajas and tamas mode of passion and ignorance in spite of knowing what is right i will still opt for the wrong but whenever i am in the mode of sattva which is goodness i am able to uh, actually have the strength to choose the correct thing so therefore bhagavad gita uh... even after the ninth chapter which is the most confidential knowledge krishna goes on to describe further chapters <laughs> right and uh, he says that this is you know the most important uh, from what you heard till now so although he is described the most confidential knowledge he goes on to describe more and saying that this is most important for you uh, and that talks about the three modes of material nature so why it's most important for us because uh it's for immediate application pure devotional service uh is something we want to at- attain that's our goal but immediately how do i you know take the, what is the next step for me i know my goal but what is my next step i i know that i have to go to the i have to go to say for example uh new york i catch a flight go to new york what is the next step my next step is to get into the car right and then get to the airport then i will be able to go from there so the next step for us is uh, you know to rise from the modes of ignorance and passion into goodness and that's a conscious choice right 
it's a conscious practice so the more and more you you know uh, use your choice muscles to you know do the right thing make the right choice a uh, conscious choice of you know living in goodness and how do you live in goodness you live in goodness by eating food which is in the mode of goodness uh, associating with people who are in mode of goodness doing activities which are in mode of goodness although at that one time you may be feeling strong urges uh, of doing activities in passion and ignorance but using our intelligence uh, we can we can actually because intelligence actually in one sense higher than the mind it is supposed to be higher than the mind but we are completely dictated currently by our mind so using our intelligence strengthening the intelligence through spiritual knowledge we can exercise some control and when you exercise that some control and choice the capacity of you know choosing increases so initially it may feel little mechanical but as you do it more and more uh, it becomes natural you establish yourself more and more in the mode of goodness and therefore uh, you would naturally kind of have inclination to do what is right or uh, choose things which are in mode of goodness is that okay all right <clears throat> so let's start with uh, the 20th shloka om gyana अतः व्यवस्थितांत्रिष्ट्वाते उद्यम्या पांडवा ऋषिकेशम तदा वाक्यम महीपते एनी वन वॉन्ट रीड द ट्रांसलेशन I can't see. Okay, I, I'll start. Yes, please. Uh, at that time, Arjuna, the son of Pandu, seated in the chariot bearing the flag marked with Hanuman, took up his bow and prepared to shoot his arrows. O king, after looking at the sons of the Thrust drawn in the military array, Arjuna then spoke to Lord Krishna these words. Right. so <clears throat> arjuna he basically is seated in a chariot which is bearing a, ma- a flag marked by hanuman i think you know you know echo of my own voice <laughs> from somewhere okay so uh, arjuna is seated in a chariot which was actually donated by agni uh, which could conquer all directions so that's one sign of his uh, being victorious or uh, you know the outcome of the battle being in favor of the pandavas this is another thing right uh, and and uh, just a second okay here here uh, so you'll see in bhagavad gita lord krishna he is addressed by different different names even arjuna uh, is addressed by krishna with different names so here uh, you know krishna is addressed as rishikesh rishikesh like we discussed last time uh, is master of senses right so uh, here krishna is directly controlling the chariot which in bhagavad gita is also defined as the uh, you know compared to a body so he is controlling the chariot of arjuna and uh, even the senses of arjuna in one sense so he is he is the master of senses of arjuna and the chariot which is being drawn by him on the battlefield so therefore he is addressed as rishikesh and uh, his his chariot being marked with the flag of hanuman is very very significant so uh, while uh, i think pandavas were in exile when they were uh, serving the exile in the forest uh, so they were in uh, badrikashram <coughs> and uh, while they were there uh, with certain sages and yudhishthir maharaj and everyone were listening to so many stories uh, mentioned by different different sages who were actually accompanying them 
So imagine, uh, you know, the Pandavas were so glorious that when they were sent to exile, they thought, Ki chalo, hai. you know, let's take this opportunity and go visit all the Tirthas. Right? And they were actually traveling all across, uh, visiting so many Tirthas. And they were in the Himalayas. And uh, the, from the minute they left their kingdom, there were so many who wanted to just join them. Nobody wanted to remain in the kingdom of uh, Duryodhana. Indra Prasth had been captured by Duryodhana. So everyone wanted to leave and join Yudhishthira. So Yudhishthira Maharaj said, no, no, <laughs> you know, be here. But they were like, nee, nee, we want to come. So they, many of them followed you know, the Pandavas for great distances. And sages joined to accompany them. Great sages. So you can imagine the exalted position of the Pandavas that even the great sages wanted to be with them. Right, and of course, you know, sages playing their own role of uh, you know uh, narrating different different pastimes and stories. And one of the sages said, "Ki we'll just keep having such conversations, and the eleven years will go by like a flashlight." And all throughout, they were hearing these wonderful pastimes of the Lord, different stories, instructive stories, right. So in <clears throat> Badrika Ashram also, they were, they were sitting and hearing from, uh, I, I forgot, I, I think Agastya Muni or someone. I'm not uh, sure of the name of the sage in Badrika Ashram at that point in time, but yeah, I think mostly it's Agastya Muni. And, uh, you know, suddenly uh, while they were sitting from, you know, the peaks of the mountain, uh, one flower, you know, dropped and it came and, uh, you know, uh, dropped in the lap of Draupadi. And this was a thousand petal golden white lotus. And she was so mesmerized looking at this lotus. It was so beautiful. And uh, she immediately desired, oh, if I get more of these, I'll make a beautiful garland for Lord Krishna and offer it to him. Not that she wanted to personally use, <laughs> right? Just, just look, everything the devotee looks at or experiences immediately things, how can I serve the Lord with this? Right? A similar, I, I just digress for a second. There was a similar uh, incident where uh, Srila Prabhupada, and th these are the beginning days, Srila Prabhupada was in Los Angeles and uh, you know he gave a class, uh, oh sorry, San Francisco, not Los Angeles, San Francisco, and he gave a class and he mentioned that how we should be 24 by seven in Krishna consciousness, right? A devote, a pure devotee is 24 by seven, Krishna conscious. Even in their sleep, they're dreaming about Krishna. So all the, it was like a thunderbolt, like a heavy statement, 24 hours, right? How is it possible, right? So uh, just after the class, and this was a question mark with everyone. After the class, you know, some disciples followed Shri Prabhupada in his room. And Shri Prabhupada, he was actually looking outside the window and there were some, you know, trucks, carrier trucks at that uh, he was looking at. And then one disciple, he, uh, I think Shrutakirti Prabhu, he mentioned, he asked the other uh, disciple there. Uh, there were some sannyasis also. He asked someone, like, Prabhupada is looking at, you know, some uh, trucks on the street. Do you think he's thinking of Krishna now? <laughs> right? He made a statement 24 hours, Krishna consciousness. And just when they were just talking like this, Shri Prabhupada turned and he said, do you see those trucks? They're, they're so perfect to be used in Jagannath Rath Yatra. Right? Just see if you can get them for Jagannath Rath Yatra. And I immediately felt, yes. <laughs> Shri Prabhupada, even looking at some trucks, is just thinking of how to serve Krishna. Or, so similarly, Draupadi here, uh, immediately, you know, getting that lotus flower, she was so excited, it was so beautiful. She wanted to make a big garland for the Lord. Uh, so she requested Bhima, please find out where this came from and I want more of these. So uh, Bhima immediately, you know, uh, analyzed and he thought, okay, it's coming from up there. And uh, it was those parts of the uh, Himalayan mountains. Uh, of course, some parts are not visible to the human eye at all. Right, there's a complete different dimension. So uh, Bhima started climbing, and of course, being uh, you know being Pandavas, they they he could easily approach. So he started climbing, and uh, he came across this pond which is filled with thousands of such lotuses. 
and he was about to enter the water to pick up some and there was a voice and these were the gandharvas right uh, he warned ki you cannot enter here this uh, pond belongs to kuvera without his permission he cannot and uh, if you want you will have to beg kuvera for taking some flowers now uh, <clears throat> shatriya is a person who never begs right and bima roared like a lion shatriyas don't beg i will take it <laughs> right and there was a big battle between all these gandharvas and uh, bhima and bhima although they were very uh, you know tricky magical very powerful but bhima he was he was having a strength of 10000 elephants and just by his roar he was like ah! just by his roar you know uh, so many of the uh, you know his opponents will just pee in their pants <laughs> his roar was such and uh, he you know just ran you know smash certain trees you know pick one gandharva here and there threw him all the different sides and he defeated all of them and got you know enough lotuses for draupadi so that she can make a garland to offer to krishna so that episode happened and so before he came down actually uh, while he was going further uh, gandamadana parvat right so uh, hanuman actually there was a big monkey lying uh, on the way on the path and bhima whenever he would go he would actually smash everything and uh, you know in his way everyone would just flee away you know get bhima away <laughs> let's let's move away like that so he was doing the same so hanuman thought okay let me you know calm him down he's causing too much disturbance to the animals also so he he uh, you know disguised himself as an old monkey and he lied down on the path and he was too huge so uh, came in the uh, on in the path of bhima so bhima said oh monkey move right so your tail is coming in my path so bhima would not change his direction in general he would just go right through even if it's a mountain any forest you just go right through any tree anything that comes in his way is smashed and he would go like that so uh, and and this monkey was on the path but his tail was you know blocking his path i was too big and uh, out of etiquette right uh, so so he said monkey please move the monkey said i'm too old cannot move right you're so strong i just saw you you know smashed everything you can lift my tail and move it and you know make a way uh, or, in fact first he offered to that you can jump over but out of etiquette right one should not cross over someone so that's an etiquette so out of etiquette he said no i cannot i cannot do that you please move so he said you are so strong please move my tail so then he uh, tried to move the tail of hanuman and with his full strength uh, right all the t-shirt you know uh, split open his muscles bulged out is <laughs> right? he is trying his best but uh, he could not and then he realized this is not an ordinary monkey right because i am so strong and there is no one uh you know who i cannot uh you know this is just a monkey i am trying to move not even fighting with him so uh, he thought this is a special personality so he asked him who are you and then hanuman revealed his identity that i am actually hanuman the servant of lord ram and i am your elder brother so he is also son of vayu bhima is also son of vayu right so i i hope everyone under, knows this that uh, kunti devi basically she had a boon where uh, she could call you know different demigods and uh, you know by their blessing she would get we get children and that's what she used when you know uh, uh, pandu could not uh, was was restricted to having uh, children essentially so otherwise he would have died if he you know uh, uh, in, had an intercourse with kunti or madri so and that's what happened he you know Uh, got swept away and you know uh, with madri and he died because of that because of the uh, curse of a sage so uh, <clears throat> yeah so both were brothers so you know bhima immediately fell flat at his feet and like uh, you know they they exchanged few words and then uh, you know he he was calmed down by uh, you know hanuman that you should not disturb the animals like this and then hanuman said you know uh, i will you know take part in the battle as well i will sit on the flag 
uh, of the chariot of Arjuna. So it's not just you know a symbol of Hanuman, but Hanuman himself is sitting on the chariot uh, of Arjuna, and uh, he said, "When you roar in the battle, right? Your roar is anyway is very very powerful, right? So when you roar in the battle, my voice will combine with your voice, <laughs> right?" Imagine Bhima is anyway so dangerous and you know his roar is so powerful. Hanuman's roar and Bhima's roar will be combined, and that will strike uh, fear in the hearts of the enemy. So some people they just died hearing the roar of Bhima on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. Right? If there were pregnant ladies, they would have miscarriages <laughs> just hearing <laughs> the roaring sound of Bhima in the battlefield. so uh, that that's how powerful that was and here it's again a sign of victory so uh, for arjuna that arjuna is there uh, so so uh, hanuman who is actually sir, who served lord ramchandra and uh, in 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 the battle with ravana and they came victorious so here hanuman is present and the same lord ram in the form of shri krishna is present uh, with arjuna and wherever there is lord krishna right there is his consort also lakshmi so even good fortune is with arjuna so these are different different signs of uh, arjuna coming out victorious or signs of his victory even before the battle started and of course dhritarashtra was you know in general disheartened with the whole arrangement <clears throat> so shil prabhupad commenting on this particular uh, uh, you know uh, shloka he mentions that arjuna he took shelter of hanuman he is following the uh, fighting acharya fighting acharya is hanuman previously he served lord ram as you know fighting in the battlefield of uh, uh, in the battle with ravana so he is actually following the footsteps and taking the mercy begging for the mercy of uh, you know the previous fighting acharya hanuman right so he is then describing how we need to also beg mercy from our previous acharyas to be successful in krishna consciousness that's that's the parampara or that's that's the uh, you know privilege we have that we have all these great acharyas previous acharyas uh, and by their mercy our progress in krishna consciousness can be you know super fast uh, shri prabhupad when he was uh, you know sitting in radha damodar temple in vrindavan Uh, so every night he would sweep so radha damodar temple is uh, you know famous temple in vrindavan uh, there are there is a samadhi of uh, samadhi and bhajan kutir of shri rupa goswami there so uh, he would he would uh, you know every he was staying there and uh, writing shrimad bhagavatam before coming to the west so shri prabhat struggled a lot initially uh, wherein uh, you know with very little money and means uh he would he took up the challenge of you know doing the translation uh, work of shrimad bhagavatam all alone all by himself he would uh, you know go to delhi time and again uh, you know print everything himself uh, collect money donations then distribute books and magazines himself with all of that struggling alone for you know so many years he kind of then uh, started his journey into the us so so during these struggling days uh, he was you know once living in radha damodar temple for some time and translating the first canto of shrimad bhagavatam and there uh, every night there was there was this one person who was also saying staying in one of the rooms in radha damodar every night he would hear a crying sound somewhere around 1 o'clock 2 o'clock he would hear a crying sound and since he was you know deep in his sleep he would not bother uh, you know to see what it is but one night you know uh, he woke up completely and he actually climbed the rooftop of radha damodar to look into the courtyard where the sound is coming from and he saw shri prabhupada alone sweeping that area sweeping the area of bhajan kutir and samadhi of uh, shri rupa goswami and begging from him o oh, rupa goswami please give me your mercy so i can carry out the orders of my guru maharaj and go to the west and preach please give me your mercy so i can actually you know translate shrimad bhagavatam so like that every single night right he was begging for the mercy of shri rupa goswami 
and you can see the result <laughs> right we are having this conversation only because shri prabhupad took that effort and uh, started this krishna consciousness movement right which is spread across the whole globe so that's that's our uh, system of begging mercy from the previous acharyas partha priya prabhu you want to add something no prabhu it is wonderfully explained everything about begging mercy so unlike in the material sense uh, where people think that you know on our own strength you know self made man is what i'll become the spiritual path is just kind of the opposite where one feels i'm helpless and he you know whatever he does he he begs and arjuna did the same thing you know he had uh, you know he had anuman on his chariot and uh, he begged his mercy that you you helped uh, lord ram and similarly i am in a battle i need your help you know so like that so it's just the opposite of material consciousness a lot of things everything is opposite in material and spiritual consciousness is one of them i'm sorry i'll i'm just uh, you know elaborating this a little bit more there was one very amazing episode comes to my mind and this is very very important so uh, the early days where uh, you know shrapas was translating his books and then he went to west and when he had a few disciples uh you know he wanted to kind of uh, because he knew this work to write one book it takes you know so many years for some people and especially a classic work like shrimad bhagavatam so even one canto took almost like two years i think initially to shrimad bhagavatam uh, two or three years if i'm not mistaken the second one uh, second part also one part of that and second part also took about a year so even to finish one canto three volumes one volume took two two or three years the second volume took like one year so and and shri prabhupad was at the age of 70 when he went to the west so once he had a few disciples he wanted to kind of speed this pro, uh, you know speed up this process because he wanted to finish all 12 cantos that was his uh, idea with 60 volumes uh, in total so uh, you know and and uh, these have to be you know books with not just uh, you know like and you see the format in which we are reading bhagavad gita actually right there is uh, shloka in sanskrit right there is shloka uh, again mentioned in uh, you know you can read that in english there is word for word uh, transliteration then there is translation and shri prabhupada is explaining everything in elaborate purports so it's not just ki humne translate karke chhod diya right it is so much work to do this and prabhupada has taken pains taking effort to do this right so uh, he wanted to speed up this process and bhagavad gita is just 700 verses shrimad bhagavatam is 18000 verses so uh, he was taking help from his disciples and also he wanted to visually depict you know what these stories are like so shri prabhupada engaged his disciples who were having even little inclination in art or who were artists uh, to kind of uh, you know do paintings and illustrations for these books so and shri prabhupada gave them instruction it has to be very very realistic not that you know someone just does some sketch and some line art and you know uh, finish that but he wanted very very realistic paintings he said these are windows to the spiritual world one has to you know see and understand that krishna is real so he wanted very very realistic paintings and all these different disciples in the early days they were very uh, you know some some were uh, abstract artists someone were uh, some people were just background artists in terms of uh, you know creating landscapes uh, some people were doing uh, you know portraits but they were not so expert and uh, you know prabhupad wanted the quality of renaissance style of painting <laughs> right and uh, that to in record time so they had very little time prabhupad was constantly producing translating so instead of you know doing typewriter uh, typewriting everything himself he then switched to a dictaphone where he was narrating and then a few disciples across uh, you know across america they would you know start typing and then later on across the globe they were st- they start typing hearing these recording tapes from shila proper so uh, from 1970 70s and even further the books started coming in so quickly right they they were you know being produced very at a very rapid pace and obviously there was a huge need for all different kinds of illustrations and especially if you look at the 10th canto of shrimad bhagavatam it's filled with so many paintings on krishna which are mesmerizing even now right so uh, 
and i remember as a child i was in love with those paintings and i wanted to buy this book which was filled with these paintings and i was collecting money <laughs> just to buy such books so uh, so these artists initially were not very expert and uh, you know shilpraupad set the standard and you know uh, that it has to be something like a renaissance style painting and uh, they were planning oh we should enter you know all fly down to italy you know they had formed this entire group of bbt bbt is bhaktivedan book trust uh, you know who was producing shilpraupad's books and uh, they had they had formed a small group of artists uh, they thought ki okay let us go to italy get training for you know in one of the art schools for 3 to 4 years come back uh, you know train some other artists who are already there and then like this you know we might be able to you know uh, do do these uh, paintings nicely so uh, shri prabhu said you know i want these uh, you know my books are about to get printed so second third canto was about about to get printed so he said i need you know paintings of these so then and and you know even further so the, the pace they could not they could not have matched the pace so uh, you know ultimately in new york in freezing cold uh, you know in the winters they sat in they they rented a small place they all sat together uh, you know with different different canvases and it was it was like a marathon for them and with brush and paint and imagine not even directly their hands they were wearing gloves right so anyone who i am from an arts background so anyone from an arts background will understand wearing gloves and painting is very difficult <laughs> right impossible for me at least for now so uh, in such a situation with the canvas in front of them they were completely helpless they were completely helpless uh, on one side you know there is spiritual master's instruction that you have to finish these different paintings in this time right and at that time the mood was they would do anything for shri prabhu right proper disciples they would they would do anything i will narrate one more story after this because it's just flowing right now <laughs> so uh, so uh, they were sitting in front of canvas and they just surrendered to krishna krishna please they cannot do anything and shri prabhu said when you are helpless krishna will then guide and uh, you know you will be able to do and and they felt as felt that genuine humility and helplessness that they cannot they are not so expert they cannot do it's a freezing winter cold they are wearing gloves and they have to finish you know very quality work in very in a you know highly you know in a record time essentially so they just surrendered they prayed every before every winding they would pray and in genuine mood of humility that i cannot do this please help me krishna please take over and i want to serve my guru and you see the kind of paintings they did they themselves were surprised and how they were painting you know it was every inch was you know laid with canvases and uh, one person would start painting uh, you know the the face the the same canvas there are two more people doing the background and uh, you know they were working 12 to 14 hours one person if he is doing something and he falls asleep you know while doing the painting the other person nicely removes him from that area with a chair and continues the work where this person has left so with that kind of dedication and speed they finished within one month uh, you know so many paintings for the 10th canto also like this krishna leela and we see those paintings today they are masterpieces there's no comparison so uh that's that's the that's the way uh of you know surrendering and in humility begging mercy and krishna reciprocates and uh shila bhakti tirtha swami maharaj he uh, one of the disciples of shila prabhupada he made a statement which is very very amazing he says uh when your desire to serve krishna exceeds your capacity to serve krishna right understand as well when your desire to serve krishna exceeds the capacity uh, exceeds your capacity to serve that is a time when empowerment happens and you are able to do something which you never thought was possible right 
guru when uh, spiritual master gives instruction wow. he gives the capacity to carry out that instruction as well that's that's called empowerment right so empowerment happens when your desire to serve krishna exceeds your own capacity so krishna thinks oh he wants to serve me so much okay let me give him more facility more strength more ability more skills so that he can serve me right oh he wants to serve me even more let me empower him even more and therefore when you see the life of shila prabhupad right he when he was traveling constantly he would sleep 2 hours and wherever he would go he would follow the same program no jet lag and while he was managing you know uh, he was traveling so much constantly writing books right? he finished more than 60 volumes of books uh, 80 volumes of books not even 60 while you know constructing temples managing devotees training them answering them through letters right uh, meeting big big dignitaries it's impossible impossible for any human right even uh, you know the, the these disciples of shri prabhupada the, their their daily schedule at the age of 60 70 80 is such that all of us would be fatigued just to follow half of their daily schedule not even half actually even if we follow one quarter of their daily schedule for one days or two, one or two days we'll be fatigued we'll be sleeping for next two three days that is the kind of work they are putting the hard work they are putting energy they are putting to serve the lord how that comes it's empowerment through krishna so the more you make the right choices the more you are empowered right the more you want to you express desire to serve krishna the more krishna gives you the capacity to serve him right and to a point where krishna says oh this human body is very limiting for you you exceeded you know full capacity of human body and more so now it's time for you to have a spiritual body so that you can serve me without any limitation because you are expressing so much desire so come back home back to god that's the only way somebody goes back home back to god by expressing more and more desire to serve the lord right so that's exactly what we need to cultivate we need to cultivate the desire to serve the lord and that desire comes by associating with devotees by hearing about the lord the more you hear the more you fall in love with krishna the more you want to serve him right so that's that's the process and not that uh, you know we are some upstarts or we'll serve krishna directly we beg mercy from the previous acharyas from spiritual master and with their mercy and blessings we are able to that that's empowerment from there and we are able to serve the lord sorry that's an elaborate discussion for this shloka but i think uh this is something we can actually apply in our daily lives harsha you want to say something yes i uh, thank you so much for the very explain but i have a question so uh, like you mentioned some of the auspicious signs that the pandavas held and so their victory was sure so but these are great devotees like pandavas shila prabhita but ordinary people like us i mean how do we understand that whether krishna is with us are there some parameters that we can uh, uh, be sure of that yes um, uh, this is happening in my life so yes krishna is there with me krishna is i am heard random i am heard random comments like uh, oh if your family is happy with you yes yes god is happy with you or sure. um, <laughs> if you are feeling some peace in your mind god is there with you so I want to know what Bhagavad Gita says that when is Krishna with us? So I can say a simple answer uh, to understand that Krishna is pleased with you uh, is that you yourself feel very very happy when you're serving Krishna, and when you yourself feel satisfied and happy, you should understand that Krishna must be really pleased. Otherwise, But all activities that, are not uh, to serve Krishna. I mean, there are some indirect services. Like, suppose I want to make a decision to buy a house, for example. So, I want to know whether God is there in this decision or not. So, you, we can always do one God's. Yeah, we can always consult. Uh, you know, and and therefore one has to have 
a shiksha guru or a counselor where you can discuss these specifics and you know ask whether this is going to take me towards krishna or away from krishna simple so <clears throat> and and of course uh, this is a person who should, who would know uh, you know a lot more information about you and and can understand and guide you practically that uh, you know yeah you should go for this decision or not go for this decision or you know if even if you're going for something uh, you know which at the face of it may not you know be black and white or oh, this will help you towards krishna or away from krishna so he can guide you in terms of nuances of what are the, some of the pitfalls when you go down a certain path to be avoided so that you know your consciousness is not disturbed and uh, you can continue serving krishna while still moving towards a particular uh, material goal and how you can utilize that in service of krishna so everything has the capacity to be used in service of krishna so how to do that practically uh, we can always seek guidance if we are not sure okay uh let's move on to the next or should we stop here part the prayer and take questions is already 12 18 12 close to 12 20 or should we do the next one and then i think we can ask if they have questions so if anyone has immediate questions or reflections we can take that otherwise we can move on to the next one as well Yes, Mary. Yes. If you can unmute, because I think you're muted, we can't hear. Uh, yeah, I, I wanted to thank you very much. Like it was a really enlightening. um lecture and i learned so much and i'm really happy to join so thank you so much thank you uh yeah any any other questions or reflections on what we heard anything you like uh that you're taking back from this class anyone else we have some time we can get on to the next shloka as well okay i think let's do 21 22 and then uh, we can again ask for questions and then if not then you know we can conclude with some announcements and till then i think if someone comes up with any question for what we already spoke or even some reflections we can uh, be ready with that as well arjuna vacha अर्जुन उच्चुता अस्मुमे Yeah, I can read Amit. Yes, Amit. Arjuna said, "O infallible one, please draw my chariot between the two armies so that I may see those present here who desire to fight and with whom I must contend in this great trial of arms." Right. So here, Arjuna is addressing Krishna, "O infallible one." Achyuta means someone who uh is infallible infallible means someone who doesn't deviate or fall down 
Krishna's position. So although Krishna was in a position of, you know, a chariot driver, but he is infallible, which means that his position is never reduced. Another thing of fallibility is that he fails to show affection towards his devotees. So even in the case of Arjuna, he is not failing to show his affection and he is ready to become a chariot driver. And another meaning here of infallible is that Arjuna is addressing or, you know, already uh, seeking forgiveness that he is the Supreme Personality of God and Master, but he is in a position uh, of, uh, you know, serving Arjuna and Arjuna is now instructing him to draw his chariot. So uh, he's already kind of asking forgiveness that you are a chitta, you are infallible, you are a supreme personality of Godhead. I am not in a position to instruct you, but since you have uh, taken this position, uh, I am obliged to instruct you. He's already kind of begging forgiveness in one sense by addressing him as a chitta. And he's asking then that please draw my chariot between the two armies. So that's the instruction which he's giving. So that I see... I may see those present here who desire to fight with whom I must contend in this great trial of arms. So he wanted to see who all are there, uh, you know, uh, whom he must. So he also to kind of, you know, get an estimate just before, uh, you know, starting his uh, fight, he want, wanted to, you know, have an estimation of who all are there and, you know, strategize how to, you know, uh, continue fighting. Like uh, Partha Priyabhu, anything you want to add? One point one that I think we've already mentioned before also that, uh, you know, so Krishna as a Lord, you know, we discussed last class also, uh, you know, he is always wanting to serve uh, his devotees. So, you know, here Arjuna's, you know, telling Krishna, do like this, you know, he's like almost like on the position of ordering Krishna. And uh, Krishna is very happily doing that. So, so devotee wants to serve the Lord, and the Lord wants to serve the devotee. Uh, so, Krishna is very happy to, you know, uh, drive the chariot for Krishna uh, for Arjuna. Like that. Okay, let's. Uh, you know, these are. I think there is an entire section coming up, so let's do this one as well. Yotshamanan. <clears throat> Avikshaham Yotsamanam Avikshaya Yetetra Samagataha Yetetra Samagataha Bartha Rastrasya Durbudhe Yudhe Priya Chikishavaha you are saying, saying, let me see those who have come here to fight, wishing to please the evil minded son of Dhritarashtra. Right? Uh, let's quickly get on to the next one also. Sanjay Vacha. Sanjay Vacha. Evam Mukto Rishi Kesho. Anyone wants to read the translation here? Quickly, anyone? Yeah, I can do it. I can do it. Yes, please go on. Yeah. Uh, Sanjaya said, O descendant of Bharata, having thus been addressed by Arjuna, Lord Krishna drew up the fine chariot in the midst of the armies of both parties. Okay. So Krishna, he immediately after him being instructed, and here also again we see uh, Arjuna is mentioned as Guda Kesha. Guda Kesh means, uh, Guda means sleep. So one who has conquered sleep and ignorance. Uh, therefore, Arjuna is addressed as Guda Kesh. So Arjuna is able to conquer his sleep and he's able to conquer ignorance both because of his friendship with Krishna and because he's a great devotee of the Lord. So uh, that's why, and again, Rishi Kesh. So he's again master of the senses, right? And master of the chariot 
drawn by uh, you know five horse uh, you know arjuna's chariot is uh, basically handling like that so he's director of the chariot and also the senses and mind of his devotee uh, arjuna and of all living entities in one sense but we don't give that right to krishna and therefore we are in ignorance the more we surrender and give control to krishna krishna will you know act wonderfully through us in a lot of ways and that's the position of the spiritual masters like we discussed right i think uh, okay from 125 we'll start on next time so now the dialogue between krishna and arjuna will start so we will do this next time so till this point uh, you know uh, arjuna has basically addressed krishna take my chariot in the middle krishna has agreed and taken his chariot in the middle and now uh, you know krishna takes his chariot in such, such a way that arjuna is bewildered and the conversation starts and krishna narrates starts narrating the bhagavad gita so that that we will do next time okay so any any doubts or questions or any reflections it's very important you reflect how can i apply what i heard right that's the next step of hearing otherwise you know yahan se niklega yahan se chala jayega so the next step is to reflect manan karna of what i heard how can i apply it what does it mean what does it mean for me right so that reflection is extremely important so anything that comes to mind immediately uh, please share any reflections or any questions if you have and not that we just have these 2 3 minutes to think about it you can think of it over the day also <clears throat> so how many of you all here uh, while some people might be thinking of reflections and questions how many of you all here are not part of any uh, reading group or are part of a reading group but nothing has been happening uh, in the last weeks our group has not it started uh, our our group has not it started i think we have not it started <laughs> Uh, just i am not able to see who is that subramaniam i am subramaniam okay, okay 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 we have to start i think this week we should start and who all are there in your group things um, uh, madam chitra kannan she is there okay and dhruv dhruv was there dhruv okay uh, we have to form that group properly and start right and uh, anyone else or just these two people i uh, think ala alaka she was also there i think alaka so i would and and even for others how is everyone connecting so i would want uh, you all to share whatever links you are using and i would recommend if everyone can i mean those are using zoom that's fine but if everyone has zoom in their group but uh, others i would recommend google meet is very simple because it's available on the google chrome browser itself which everyone has readily available and uh, the meeting id id is also very easy to share and you can just disable uh, you know uh, or you can you can just share that link with us because even we would want to kind of join and you know uh, sometimes whenever you are holding those sessions uh, and just to see how things are going and you know if there is any input from our end we can definitely you know make that so me partha priya prabhu uh, and maybe a few more might you know keep joining uh you know different groups at different points in time so if if everyone who's already holding uh you know such reading sessions please post their uh, links and maintain one link as far as possible google meet is very easy uh you can just create one one the leader can create one link and that can be shared for every meeting uh, zoom also i think you have that facility to just maintain one single link so let's let's keep it simple for everyone and easy for everyone to join and those who are not yet uh, anyone here who's not part of any group till now uh i am yet to join okay manvanti and so i might join uh, priya's group or pravin tiwari's group okay so i think uh, everyone is aware of the different timings yes yes okay 
so uh, we will still i think po- uh, part of people we can post it again so that the timings are clear and i'm requesting all the group leaders to please post the links so even if someone is not able to or we are not able to uh, we, we should be able to kind of join very easily so if uh, let's take this 5 minutes and if everyone can put all of that in a chat it will be great please should we share our uh, email id and maybe mobile number if they can yeah. add us in the groups yeah so i think that's all yeah. easier then so maybe we can add uh, i mean i'll paste my number if you all can add us to the respective whatsapp groups mm-hmm. then you know we can also see how things are going in case there is anything uh not happening or if we can help in any way so i've uh, shared my so it says it's a direct message to part the prayer to everyone so uh yes so these are <laughs> our email ids and phone numbers so please include us either through whatsapp or an email invite uh to be part of your reading groups as well so we can also join and try and maintain that same link as much as possible like i said google meet becomes very easy uh yeah part of prepare we want to add something no uh, i think that's it like so uh, how many groups have had their meetings in the last couple of weeks so we can also actually name the groups i think we had five groups we can name them after five pandavas yes <laughs> easier because otherwise group 1 group 2 we also confuse who's there in group 1 group 2 i think we can give a name so i think praveen's uh, group is there uh, i attend their uh, meeting yeah maybe they make they can be you this tier group or are you know okay so who which other group has had their meeting any other group say sí, prabhu ji hari krishna this is amit and okay. i'm part of group 1 we meet every sunday same time zoom so i'm using my uh, zoom uh, account and wow. i post that link and we've been meeting regularly so praveen prabhu is a group yudhishthir and an amit prabhu is group arjuna you all can name your groups also like that on whatsapp so yudhishthir and arjuna is there then next any other group we can have bhima group priya i think she's already there i think the same group of praveen oh. yeah there so there are two priyas in our group so one is uh, with praveen's group and one is uh, in my group so we all are leaders there's no one particular okay. leader as such great okay. great <laughs> leader someone who is hosting the session regularly that's the definition right now <laughs> then you can say i am the facilitator because my link is being used but there's nothing like uh, no importance okay. got it got it any other group happening uh, have had their meetings in the last two weeks no so we need to work with bima group nakul and sahadev group the other three groups we will check who are the members and we can try and have a meeting it will help us to you know keep pace and also uh, when there is discussion and when we meet together you know it helps a lot uh, more than when we just read by ourselves of course reading by ourselves is something also that many of us may prefer i also personally prefer sometimes but when we have a discussion it this helps to bring out so many other points okay uh so so group 3 i think uh, venkatesh uh, uh, yeah subramanyam i think uh, prabhu and chitra mata ji and i think two three others are there in that group uh, i think their admin is uh, who is the admin uh, i can't hear you because you're muted so dhru 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 is being missing Dhruv. the classes uh, is he there today no so maybe one of you all can uh, chitra mata ji take up the uh, I, like hosting the meeting i would you be comfortable doing that for your group uh i would just check because i have to see uh, what permissions i have because everything is controlled by it security i'll have to see what oh. i can access yeah okay all right yeah Or but any- uh, 
but uh, i think google meet should be okay because zoom is not permitted right so google meet is working off the browser it should be fine just check if yeah, you can i just check it up i'll have to take clearance anyway i need to check yeah so i think uh, what you could do uh, in such situation uh, so right now you're using uh, you know what exactly are you using? at the moment i'm using my handphone because my net is not working on the uh, laptop oh, okay yeah so worst case you can use your phone <laughs> yeah we can use the phone not a problem i can do that i can initiate it not a problem great 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 uh, prabhu ji for the group number 2 i am traveling so i am not in town but most of the members of the group have already joined like priya's group or you know according to the time slot whatever they want to join hmm. so that has also happened that people who who have seen the other time slot they think that you know that is suitable time for us so some of them have joined others group also okay uh not a so, problem i think uh, yeah partha prabhu you want to say something so that, that's okay uh so just if shelda if you can find out who is it that who hasn't joined any group yet maybe there are two or okay. three if you can let us okay. know there might be more okay. who have not joined any group also so we can put them all together for your group and then your okay. group that also also okay. uh, <clears throat> i think in the feb end we are planning one more session of 3 day bhagavad gita which is again like an outreach which you guys got introduced to and from there we are continuing so uh, towards the end of february i think mostly it should be uh, 27 28 maybe first of march as well so these these on these dates or maybe it could be a friday saturday sunday so we are planning a, again a three day bhagavad gita course and uh, you know you can invite your friends uh, we will also be sharing some material in the group you can pass it on to other people so there would be more people after the three sessions joining this class as well so there will be always opportunity to have more people in your group and uh, even if right now there are one or two you should not you should not be discouraged if there is a certain time that uh, you know feels more suitable to you and you want to kind of do it at that point in time uh, we can always go ahead and uh, continue our reading sessions for those times and you know more people will join in very soon uh, you know by the end of the next month hopefully we'll try and we'll be running in the yeah. speaking uh, session also there are some people who don't know english so they are interested to join but uh, if you can tell me uh, if there yeah, are any some groups there are some groups uh, i'll also check with vijay mathu too so we can share the details you can ask him to join hindi groups yeah we will we'll just figure out uh, you know a consolidated uh, you know list or maybe you know the contact person and then we will put that in the group itself so that you can uh, you know pass on the number for the hindi sessions